Goodbye. Are we here? I don't know, because my phone sucks and so does my internet. But if we're here, welcome to the Jason Elliott Show. It's sometime in August and it's a Thursday night and it's after 7 o'clock, which means that we're right on time. Hello everybody. Where are you calling in from? Where are you watching from? How's your week been? How's the weather? How's your mom? Tell me everything and while you do that, I'm gonna go get myself something to drink. Ooh, because it's hot, it's Haiti. Hey, all right, people are starting to come in now. Sorry about that. Woo, all right, y'all tell me, where are you calling in from? How's your week, how's the weather, how's your mom? And I'll be right back after I get something cold to drink because it's hot here in Charlottesville. Alright, let's see who's in. Ugh. I'm gonna use my iPad because I've gotten spoiled by using this. Alright, let's see. I can see a couple of people here. But I'm gonna use this because I really can't read these here. Oh, oh. alright, let's see here, Grayson Elliott. I'm going to scroll on to his profile, and then we're just going to click this thing right there so I can see who's here. Alright, let's see. Sean Pittman Anderson. Hey, handsome. Hope your week is going good. My week's going great. Thanks for asking. Oh, that's the end. No, it's not. Gets me every week. Alright, let's see. Chanel says that it uh, is stormy up in Brooklyn. Well, I hope you're enjoying your week. And I hope that storm passes so you can enjoy the rest of your trip up to good old New York City. Let's see, Sean says it's hot in Myrtle Beach, too. Suzanne Davenport, hello, Jason. Hello, Suzanne, thanks for tuning in tonight. Javi says, uh, week's great. Mom's on vacay, so she's fabulous. I'm currently boycotting adult responsibilities and playing video games like a real pro. Well, I tell you what, that sounds absolutely wonderful. That's gonna be me soon, because I'm going to the beach this weekend, and then in a couple weeks, I'm going on a real vacation for once. Whoa, what's going on there? Let's do that. Ah. All right, let's see. Jason Dale says, what's up, Jason? Tried to tell your bro to catch an episode. Well, I appreciate you telling him that, and I appreciate everybody telling everybody to catch an episode. I'm glad y'all are here. Hey, Crystal, thanks for tuning in. Whew. Hold on, that's the end of the song, which means it should be the beginning of the, the show. <laughs> Ugh. But we're going to take our time tonight because I'm a little out of breath because as you can see, we're a little bit behind schedule. Uh, my phone died as soon as I went to go live because I have a stupid phone. So if anybody uh, wants to get me a phone for my birthday coming up, please, by all means. Let's see, Dean says it's 115 in Baltimore. Jonah says it is sunny and beautiful in California and I'm at the beach with my cat. Well, I hope that you and your pussy are having a good time tonight. Um, let's see, Jason Dale says, my wife is super jealous of your hair. Uh, well, madam, I heard that you had a couple of things to say about my hair to some people, and I would be more than happy to do your hair sometime. Uh, <laughs> I can't wait to see you guys, uh, soon, hopefully. Uh, let's see, Faith Chambers is tuning in from Virginia Beach, and Ann Kaiser all the way down from good old South Carolina, Lackey, Georgia line. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in tonight as we talk about cutting out the negativity in your life. Uh, since I know everybody's going to be asking, I'm drinking milk with cinnamon and ice tonight. I needed something cold, um, and this is what I got. Uh, with the week that it's been, I wouldn't mind having something stronger, but that's okay. Um, and you can see behind me, I did decide to decorate for my birthday party, which is on the 20th. Um, but this is all the sneak peek you'll get until the day of, so I'm really excited about it. Um, but all that's positivity, and that kind of goes in line with what we're talking about tonight. 
the negativity. So we're cutting out the negativity in our life. So I want to talk to you a little bit about that. Um, and to do that, I'm just going to look over here at some notes. Um, because I really just want to talk about, yeah, about three things or so that we can do to cut the negativity out of our life. Uh, I think we're at a point right now in the world where we've got so much negativity and we've got so many things that are going on that are bringing us down that it's really important for us, for ourselves, uh, to uh, bring ourselves up and to be a little bit positive, if not for the world, for ourselves. Um, so tonight I'm focusing a little bit more on what we can do for ourselves in such a negative world. Uh, or at a time when it seems like there's so much negativity going on. Um, there are trains going by tonight, so I'm sorry if they're a little bit loud. Let's see. All right, cool. Michael Masters, thank you for tuning in tonight. That time difference gets everybody. Um, don't worry, it even gets me sometimes, and I'm always on East Coast time. All right, so um, a lot of times we hear people compare life to a garden or a flower bed. Um, and what they mean by that is that, you know, life is like a, like a garden where things are planted and things grow, but they're there for a season. We hear that life is short. Life is nothing but a season. Um, so oftentimes people like that comparison of our lives being a garden because gardens are beautiful. Gardens make new life. Gardens are a place where um, life can be lived and life can flourish. So we oftentimes hear life compared to a garden full of beautiful flowers or fruits that we must maintain. So how do we maintain a garden? Well, we have to make sure that it is, it's fed, it's watered, um, and if we don't feed ourselves, what's going to happen? Our fruits are going to perish. We're not going to reap any benefits of all the hard work and all the uh, seeds that were planted. So, um, you know, we have to remember that in life we have to nourish our garden. Um, not only do we have to nourish our garden, but we have to keep it shaded from too much sun, so, sunshine, but we have to make sure that it gets plenty of other sunshine. So making sure that that positive energy is being put into the garden, um, but that it's not so much that we burn our plants. Um, and the same in life. We have to have a certain amount of positive energy. We have to have the warmth in our lives, but we have to make sure that we're not always uh, in this, this heavy heat of you know, too much energy coming in. We have to make sure that we take time to rejuvenate and enjoy the shade in life um, because it, too much of that really good thing, which is sunshine or energy um, or adventure, too much of that without a little bit of balance in life is terrible. Um, it's fatal for us. Uh, the other thing that we have to do, aside from water our plants and fertilize our plants, uh, and uh, keep our plants happy with the right amount of sunshine, we have to do this thing that not a lot of people enjoy, um, which is called weeding. We have to weed our garden, and we have to pull out those things that we didn't plant, the things that aren't positive in our garden, because if we don't, what's going to happen? If we don't take those weeds out of our garden, they're going to grow up and they're going to choke out all of the fruit in our garden. They're going to choke out all of the flowers in our flower bed. And what's going to then happen is that the weeds, the things that we don't want, that's going to completely take over our garden or our flower bed. And then we're not going to be left with anything um, beautiful to look at, anything delicious to eat. Uh, we're going to be left with nothing but weeds. So we have to weed. Um, and tonight we're going to be talking about how we are going to weed those weeds out of our own life. Um, the weeds being negativity. Uh, let's see. Yes, and Michael hits on a great point here too, which also goes into this thing. Cutting out the pests from our garden. we got to keep those pesky little pests out of our garden, otherwise they'll eat everything up. Exactly what we're talking about tonight. The negativity that we're talking about that gets into our garden's or the, the pests uh, and the uh, stroke brain, sorry. Uh, the pests that get into our garden and the weeds that grow, those are the things that choke out our flowers and our fruits and our vegetables, much like the negative people and the negativity in general that get into our lives that then choke out all of the beautiful things that we're working towards and the things that we want to become and put forth. So that's a perfect point, a perfect segue into exactly what we're talking about tonight. So we're going to talk about 
three things that we can do uh, to get rid of that negativity, to weed out the negativity in our life. And there are more than three things that we can definitely do. Um, and so as you're thinking about, about those negative, uh, negative things in your life and what you do to remove them, please comment uh, so that we can all learn and we can all grow um, from, from your experiences too, because I'm only going to touch on three ways to get rid of that negativity, um, but I want all of you to feel free to share the rest of your ways too, um, so we can learn together. So I look forward to seeing what you all have to say as we go along. As always, if you agree, if you disagree, comment. Like, this is, this is interactive. I, I, want to, I want to hear what you all have to say about this stuff too. Um, so, let's see here. I need to put a space in here, otherwise I'm not going to know it's two different things. <laughs> Uh, right. Here we go. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about um, is basically finding your inner circle of friends. So finding this, this tight-knit group of people in your life um, with whom you can share your negativity. Um, now, a lot of people will ask me all the time, Jason, how do you stay so positive? Um, and I always say, oh, well, if you really only knew. Uh, because the things that I put up on Facebook are generally geared toward positivity. Um, when I'm out, I try to be positive, and I honestly try to live a positive life. Um, like we talked about last week, 51%. Again, I want to see that hashtag tonight when we're done. Hashtag 51PERCENT. -E hashtag 51%. 51% uh, is the way that we can live our lives where the majority of our lives is positive, but we can still have that little bit of not so positive in our life. What I try to do is I only share that 49% that's less than positive with an inner circle of friends. Um, so I can count really on one hand the inner circle of friends that bear the brunt of all the negativity that comes into my life. Um, you know, so I will, I'll call... Um, my mom, for example, is one of those people. Uh, my mom has seen the good, the bad, the ugly, and the everything in between. My mom is definitely one of those people. Um, I lump my siblings into kind of one because they all act as one unit. Um, and so my siblings, um, you all know Justin. Um, you know, Justin I talk about a lot, and you all have kind of grown with me as our friendship has grown. Um, those three... Um, Caitlin, Marcus, a couple of other people, um, you know, that y'all have seen a little bit here and there. That's basically my inner circle. You know, I have a couple of other people, so maybe it's two hands. I have two hands of an inner circle, not just one now that I think about it. Um, but Chris, you know, all these people. But what I don't do is I don't rely on everybody in the entire world to be my sounding board. What I have is I have a very close couple of people that I will unload on if something is really on my mind. Um, and I do see my connection is weak right now, so if I'm freezing up, I do apologize for that. Um, it should catch back on pretty soon. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I have myself an inner circle of friends. The inner circle of friends is uh, who I share my negativity with in a safe space. They're my sounding board. Who is not my sounding board? The people that follow me on Facebook, the people that follow me on Instagram and on Twitter, um, the people that I meet in my clinic, uh, the people that I just come across with or who want to reach out to me or are just general people in my life, the cashier at the store is not my sounding board. Um, you know, these people are not my sounding board. I have selected a group of people with whom I can express that 49% that isn't always so positive in my life um, because I think it's really important that we have a safe space with them. So the first thing that I would say to reduce the negativity in your life, um, in your life, what I do in my life, is I have my inner circle. And here's why, because I don't think that Facebook, I don't think that Twitter, I don't think that any form of social media should be your sounding board, because as much as I know so many people that follow me um, or talk to me on Facebook, as much as I know they would be there for me and they want to be there for me, they don't play that role in my life. Uh, and so what I do is I pick the people that play that role in my life. And what that does, um, 
is it stops them from having to do the next thing that I'm going to tell you to do, which is remove the negativity if it's unwanted or undesired um, or unfulfilling in your life. So I am the inner circle for some of my friends who call me and they can moan and complain and whine and do whatever they want to do to be negative and that's my role and I'm okay with that. If I see people on Facebook who are constantly down-talking people, who are constantly posting drama, um, who all they want to do is gossip, I'm going to hit unfollow. Um, and I don't have a problem saying that because what it is, is this is the second step to removing some negativity in your life. Literally, removing yourself or removing the cause. Um, so I will unfollow people uh, if I see that all they're doing is posting negative things. If it's all... Um, woe is me, I cannot have that in my life because I'm too much of an empath to see that every day without taking it on for myself. I don't want to start absorbing the negativity of other people when they just want to post drama, when they want to post the negative things in life. So if there's not that balance, if I don't feel like they're 51% positive or more, I'm not going to follow them. Now, what I will do is I'll always be there if they want to talk to me because that's just the type of person I am. So I'm not saying turn your back on people. I'm just saying tonight we're talking about making my life better, making your life better. For me, cutting out those people is, is really important to me. Um, so for me, what I do is I remove myself from the situation or I remove um, that situation from my life. And that could also be if you're... Say you're in a room and a bunch of people are talking negative and you only hear negative, 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 walk out of the room. That's all it takes. Removing yourself from that environment or that situation. Um, so if you're in a room where it's all negative, get out to somewhere that's 51% positive. Um, if you are in this rut in your life where everything is negative, change something up and get yourself out of the situation. The first step we talked about, find your inner circle of friends and let that be your sounding board. You'll get your feedback that you need from people that know you best instead of all of this people all over Facebook land telling you what to do. Find your inner circle. That's number one. Number two is remove yourself or remove the cause. Don't keep things around that are negative. Don't keep people around that are negative. Uh, don't keep anything in your life that isn't positive. Uh, because all that's going to do is that's going to stop your, your journey. That's going to weed, uh, be weeds or pests in your garden of life, and you don't have time for that, and you shouldn't waste your time on being more negative than you are being positive. That feeds into number three, which is if there's a problem, don't focus on that problem. Don't bring up that problem unless you're willing and able to talk about a solution. For me, what happens so many times is that I see there's negativity and I want to call it out, but what I have to remember is it's not my job to call out a problem unless I'm able to offer a solution for it too. And that goes for, for me in my life. If I see that there's a problem in my life, I'm going to find a solution to it. So the third step to getting that negativity out of your life, if you're going to call something out as negative, make sure you have a solution to make it positive. Um, I also don't really like when people come up to me and say, you did this wrong, you're doing this wrong, you shouldn't do this, I, I think you're wrong and you don't know this. What I want you to do is explain to me, this is why I'm thinking that way and this is how you can fix it. Or, um, this is what you're doing wrong, so why don't you try this? So, for example, if I had a boss who constantly was saying, which I don't have a boss like this, by the way, I just want to make that clear. But if I had a boss who was saying, you're doing this wrong, it's wrong, it's, you're, nope, it's not right, nope, not right, nope, not right, eventually that's going to be getting to be really negative in my life. What I need is somebody who's going to say, actually, this paperwork isn't quite filled out right, so if you go and do this form first, or if you look at this, you know, this template, it'll get you the answers you need. That's offering a solution to the problem of me not doing my work right. Um, if you, uh, since I've got a lot of entertainers on here right now, I'm looking at the roster, there are a lot of performers. If you are a performer who constantly wants to say, her eyebrows are wrong, or he doesn't have the right kind of makeup on, or he looks terrible, um, and you're constantly saying, your costumes are wrong, your makeup is wrong, you're, you don't know the words, don't say all that unless you're going to take it one step farther and offer a solution. Hey, I noticed, you know, you've been wearing the same costume a lot. 
why don't I give you one of mine? Or, hey, I'm getting ready to clean out some of my costumes. Do you want to borrow some, or would you like to buy some of what I have and expand your wardrobe? Hey, I noticed that, um, you know, you were struggling with your makeup a little bit in the dressing room. Can I show you some of the techniques that I used uh, to get to where I felt more comfortable? Hey, that song, you know, was really fun, but maybe it's a little bit too... Uh, you know, too upbeat for somebody who's new to the stage. Why don't Why don't you try this song that I heard? It, it's actually a really good one to fit your personality. You're You're identifying a problem, but you're offering a solution. And to me, that has been such a major point in getting the negativity out of my life. Is saying if I can't offer a solution to it, I'm not going to deal with it. I'm gonna cut it out. So if I can't do number three which is offer a solution to the problem, I'm going to do number two, which is remove myself from that situation to where I don't have to see that problem anymore. And then I'm going to go back to step number one, which is go to my sounding board uh, and get some input on uh, why I'm feeling so negative about something. So I know it sounds really easy when I say it like that, um, but those, like I said, are just three of the ways that, um, that I like to remove some of the negativity. Um, so removing negativity is one, I have my inner circle of friends with whom I can vent, I can share my frustrations, I can ask guidance. I don't open it up to the entire world because my sounding board is there for that. My very closest friends are the ones that I can turn to and be negative and it's okay. Um, what I do after I talk to my sounding board and after I vent it out, or if I'm not unable to do that, the second thing, what did we say the second thing was? The second thing is removing myself or removing the cause. So if I'm in a room where everybody's being really negative, I'll just walk out. No problem, because I want to get out of there. Um, if I'm in an employment opportunity where uh, they're being too negative with me and everybody around me, they're just gossiping and moaning and groaning and complaining the whole time, what am I going to do? I'm going to find a new job. Because if I don't find a new job, I'm going to turn into one of those that's always complaining and unhappy. So um, I think it's really important to remember number two, remove yourself or remove the cause. And then number three, well, we had just talked about number three. Um, oh my gosh, stroke brain. What was number three? What? Uh, hold on. I know this because I wrote it. Uh, Y'all are seeing an insecurity in action because my mini stroke that I had still bothers me sometimes. Number three, um, don't tell somebody that they're negative without offering them a positive. Don't tell yourself that there's a, a negative action or a negative situation or a problem unless you're going to give yourself the opportunity to be the solution to it. Whew, gosh. Um, now, and all this stuff, let's see, I'm actually going to scroll through here for just a second and see what kind of comments we have. Leonard says, things that, I, uh, things that I stay so positive because you are a positive individual. Oh, you are a very unique, wonderful, imaginative, and beautiful human being, and that's why. Well, thank you, Leonard. That's really, that's really sweet. Um, and I think that goes back to keeping those people around us who are positive influences. If we are in a situation where everybody around us is negative, we're not going to be able to stay so positive anymore. Um, and I think we do that to ourselves quite often, and we don't even realize it. You know, we, we always say, why is everybody in such a bad mood? Why is everybody in such a bad mood? Why is everybody so cranky? Why is everybody so negative? Why is everybody depressed? Why? And what we're not realizing is a simple solution is to offer them a solution or to get out. And if everybody around you is negative, if they're all negative Nancys and bitter Bettys, get out because you don't want to be that. What do we want to be? We want to be 51%, 51% positive. Don't forget, make another, make another uh, hashtag post because I'm going to look it up again. Hashtag 51percent, -E hashtag 51%. The principle behind that is if 51% or more of our actions are good, are positive, are happy, our life is going to follow that trend too. Um, Ashton says, you've been an amazing inner circle and support system. You're great at it. Um, 
I appreciate that, and I'm I'm glad that I have the opportunity to be that that sounding board for other people too. Uh, because my inner circle is so great, and they are so wonderful. My, you know, my two hands of inner circle people in my life um, are are so powerful in my life that I can then return that, you know, to to other people. So it really it really is awesome to have a good inner circle because then you get to do that for other people. Uh, my aunt Phyllis says hello, hello. Uh, Suzanne says, such a good point. And Crystal says, I really love the third, third step. Makes perfect sense. Um, and that third step was what? The third step was don't call out a problem or don't allow negativity without offering that solution or that positive action to make up for it. Suzanne said, I have said in the past that happened to me before and I tried. It comes off so much nicer. Oh, yeah, that's really good. And that, that goes into that third step that Crystal was talking about. Um, is saying, you know, not saying, you've got a problem. But saying, oh, yeah, you know, that happened to me before. And what I did to overcome it was blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, so we can talk about, uh, I don't know, since we're talking about gardening. If somebody keeps killing every single plant, uh, you know, that you got, then all you can say Oh, yeah, that used to happen to me, too. What I tried was watering them. <laughs> Imagine that. You know, so you're offering that solution. Let's see here. Phil says, Absolutely agree with everything that you're saying, but I'm curious as to how to deal with a problem that is either has no known solution or no immediate solution. Um, all right, so I think... Yeah, so Suzanne actually said, can you get a little more specific? I thought I saw somebody respond to that. Let's see here. Um, so Phil wants to know, how do you deal with a situation or a problem that has no known solution or no immediate solution? Um, that's a really good question. So in that situation, what could we do? Uh, if we're if we're looking at this, this is more of a problem solving question, I think, um, because if we're talking about um, a problem that we don't know if there's a solution or not, maybe that's that's more of critical thinking of problem solving of saying what have I already tried, and let me let me try something else. Um, so we talked about how do we know when it's time, uh, and that's a little bit different of an issue of how do we know it's time to cut that negativity out. I think sometimes you just know. And sometimes what it means to weed things out or to cut things out doesn't mean that it's permanent. And I think that's really important to remember, especially to Phil's question, is that you can go out to a garden on Thursday and you can pull every single weed out. What's going to be there on Saturday? More weeds. So it's a process that keeps going. So in this situation... If you're dealing with a problem and you feel like there's not a solution and you feel like you just keep getting lost, if you're in a situation where there's no immediate solution, cut the problem out and I guarantee you, it'll come back. Weeds come back in our garden and that's okay. It doesn't mean that you suck at being a gardener. It means that nature is running its course. So if you haven't found a solution to your problem, Take that step number two. Remove yourself or remove the problem. Get it out. And if it's a problem that we need to solve, it's going to come back. It will always come back until we solve it or permanently cut it out. But what, what we don't have to do is say, oh, I don't know what to do. I'm just, I, I got to freak out. No, that's a form of negativity. What we're going to do is say, there's this problem and I've tried A, B, C, Q, and T. And I still can't figure it out. I'm going to remove myself from the situation for right now because I know that if it's a problem, it's going to keep coming back until I solve it. Um, so that's probably how I would deal with that. That's how I've dealt with that in the past is that if I didn't have an immediate solution or I didn't know how to fix something, I've set it to the side. I've removed myself from that situation. And then what I've done is I've waited for it to creep back into my life. And then I tried something new based on what I learned not to do the first time or the second time. Or the third time. So maybe maybe that answers your question a little bit. Um, comment and let me know how you feel about that answer. Mike says, love you, buddy. Mike, thank you for watching. I appreciate you being here tonight. 
Um, Sean says removing yourself, and I think that was in in reference to Phil's question of what do I do if I don't know how to solve something? And I think that's definitely a good answer. Um, <clears throat> um, Sherry says, you're doing great. Thanks, Sherry. Um, Sean says, removing yourself is not always easy, but giving a solution with positive reinforcement is a great suggestion. Yeah, so a lot of times we find it very difficult to remove ourselves or remove people or situations from our lives. Um, and this whole topic tonight actually sprang from a question at the end of last week's show. So if you go back and you, and you watch last week or if you tuned in, at the end, somebody who is logged in tonight watching asked, what happens when these people are your family members? What do you do? And this was at my rant when I said you cut people out of your lives who aren't encouraging you to grow. Um, so what do you do if, um, if the negative situation is your family? And this goes right back to what Sean was just saying. Removing yourself or removing other people is not always easy. And it's not. Um, but at the end of the day, and this is, this is my, my opinion on the matter. At the end of the day, your family is made up of people. So just because they're your family doesn't mean that they're exempt from doing wrong. It doesn't mean that they still can't be a negative influence or an impact on you. Um, and I saw Ernie uh, tune in. Uh, he had commented on the thread, if you go to my picture that I had posted earlier, and he said that he had to stop doing phone check-ins with some of his family because they were just toxic, and he felt like he was drinking from a fountain of toxic uh, mentalities and um, you know, words, and that it was not healthy for him. And so my stance is, whether they're your family or not, if someone is being negative towards you and negative in your life, and they are not being a positive influence, you have to pull them out like a weed and let them go. They can very much so come back into your life when they decide to be positive. And I think it's really important to always allow people that opportunity to come back into your life. But I have this theory in life. <coughs> I have an open door policy, both in my home <laughs> and in my life. That open door policy says, you're welcome to come in. I welcome anyone who's good into my life, into my home. You're welcome to come in. The minute that you decide that you're going to walk out that door, the minute you decide that you're too good or you're going to leave, if you walk back, at, back out that door, or if I have to ask you to leave and you walk out the door, you don't decide when you get to come back in. I do. And there are a lot of people in my life, both family members and non-family members, who have said, I'm walking out of your life. And I let them walk out that door. And now it is up to me if and when they are allowed to come back into my life. That's just, that's how I run my life. Um, so it's not always easy to remove yourself, but sometimes it's easy to let other people remove themselves. And what I have found is that if I live my life in a positive way, the negative people are going to find their own ways out because they're not going to necessarily want to be around it. Um, you know, like minds, we, we come together. Birds of a feather, we flock together. Um, and so for me, one of the issues there is that I try to keep a lot of people in my life and I have to understand that if they're removing themselves out of my life, it's either because I'm being negative towards them or that they just don't want to be around my positivity, and I let them go. Uh, so I think that's really important. Removing yourself or removing others isn't always easy, but it's a very important step to do um, if we haven't reached another solution with each other or for each other. Let me see here. Uh, my sister is tuning in with my mom, with Christina, and with my brother-in-law. Hi, family. I think this is probably the first time that my mom's ever watched my show. Uh, I still haven't gotten her to an entertainment show at a nightclub yet, but she's watching the Jason Elliott show, so if my mom, who barely knows how to use a computer, can watch, I know all y'all can too. <laughs> Alright, let's see. Leslie's tuning in all the way from Australia. Thank you for tuning in from Oz. Michael Masters says, I always look at this as a decision. <clears throat> Every day when we wake up, 
we get to choose if we want to be positive or negative. It's not always easy, but if you stop and think before being so reactive to things in life, you can find the positive in any situation. Absolutely. And this has to go with exactly what we've been talking about, the 51%. Um, I was telling somebody today, I said, there is no way, for as much as I try to be happy in life and as much as I'm positive about things, there's no way that I can be that way 100% of the time. So I strive for at least 51%. And she was like, but 51%? What is 51%? And I was like, the majority. I have to decide that the majority of my day, the majority of my life, the majority of my hour has to be positive. So if I have a 60 minute block of time, then I say roughly 35, 40 minutes of that time has got to be what? Positive. So if I'm in a really bad mood, I try to keep it within that 49% of whatever hour. Sometimes I have to make that a little bit larger and say, I'm in a really bad mood. Let me just try to keep 49% of my day negative and 51% positive. Now that might mean sleeping for 51% of the day, but at least I'm not negative. So this is a new kind of theory that I've adopted in the last few months. Um, uh, and it, it seems to be working, but it's exactly like Michael said, is that it's a choice whether we're going to be negative or positive. And we don't always get that opportunity to say, hmm, would I like to be positive or would I like to be negative? Sometimes it's, oh, crap, I'm being really negative. Do I want to keep being negative or can I find something positive? So we don't always get to start from the beginning, but any time is the opportunity for us to make that decision. So I think that's really important what he brings up is that we can look at it like a decision. Sarah says, your circle can change as you grow. It's looking to keep that positivity and honesty there that matters most. You are the company you keep. So important. Um, so if we think about this in regards to a garden, you know, we might, we might not fertilize the seeds the same way that we would fertilize them once they've started to grow up into actual plants. Um, we may not water them too much when they're just growing because it'll drown them out. So we have to wait until they get higher and bigger and, you know, start blooming before we start putting on a lot of fertilizer or a lot of more sunshine or, you know, that they can go through other temperatures. Is that as our garden grows, so does the way we keep care of it. Um, the amount of sunshine, the amount of water, the amount of fertilizer, um, how susceptible they are to weeds. These things change. And what we have to do is realize that in life, our circles have to change too. Um, so Sarah brings up a really good point. The people that I was friends with, you know, that, that I had as my inner circle in middle school, not so much my inner circle now. You know, there are a couple that I still keep in touch with. Um, but what has happened is, as I've grown, so has my inner circle changed. And that's really important. Sarah brings a good point that you are the company that you keep. Um, and that's one reason why a lot of the negativity in your life is going to, you know, pop out because they don't want that company. But you have to decide when is somebody being positive and when are they being negative. So very good point. Thanks for sharing, Sarah, only. Uh, let's see. Suzanne says, Ashton, I agree. Having an expert is good within your group. Uh, yeah, and that, that had to do with going back to our inner circle. <clears throat> So having somebody in your inner circle who is an expert, maybe in psychology, or maybe just an expert in who you are and how you think and how you function, maybe how you overreact or how, how you process things, having an expert of things like that is really important to have them nearby. All right. Let me see what we got here. <clears throat> Uh, Phil says, thanks. So I'm guessing that that question was pretty much answered. Uh, hi, Matthew. Thank you for tuning in tonight, Matthew. Keep crumb there. Sean says, family has been the easiest for me. They are the worst support systems most of the time. My love ties are stronger than blood ties. And I think that's really important to remember, too, is that family isn't just necessarily your blood and your genetics and your biology. Family is, it's a heart thing. Um, so I have people that I would consider my family who are genetically not related to me at all. And if they are, well, I mean, it's way down the line. Uh, and I'm very blessed and fortunate that my family, for the most part, has been a really good support system. But I realize that not everybody has that luxury. Um, 
So it is really important then to remember that family doesn't necessarily have to be your blood kin. It can be, you know, your heart ties as well. Dane and Steve are both tuning in. Thanks, guys, for watching. <clears throat> Ooh. Sorry, I almost blocked you, Dane. My finger sat there too long. Uh, Zachary Taylor is watching out in the Lexington, Virginia area. Thanks for watching, Zach. And Christopher says hello there to everyone watching. Hi, Christopher. Thank you for tuning in, as well as Jordan. Clara said she loves this. And I think it's great to love stuff like this, because if we love this, you know, and if we have this discussion with each other, and if we talk openly, um, then, you know, we can encourage other people to have a weed-free garden and to enjoy their life as well. Um, let's see, we've been chatting for a little while, and that is evident by my dry throat. So, you know what that probably means? That means I'm quitting. It's quitting time! I need to go do some stuff, and I also need to drink more than just milk with cinnamon in it, because I'm losing my voice, and I don't want to lose my voice! But what are we doing? We're going to go weed our gardens. Because sometimes... That's what you gotta do. And how are we gonna weed our gardens and how are we gonna make our lives a little less negative? This is what we're gonna do. First of all, let's see if I can remember them this time. We're gonna have our inner circle. We're not gonna blast our problems and our negativity to the entire world because nobody wants to hear all that stuff unless they're part of our inner circle. So we're gonna enjoy our inner circle for doing their job exactly that. And we're not gonna blast our negativity to the rest of the world because they're gonna do the second step, which is remove the problem or remove themselves. So stop following people on social media who are negative. Stop being in situations where you feel like you want to become negative. Stop being in situations where other people around you are being negative because we're gonna remove ourselves from that. We're gonna put ourselves in a situation where we are at least 51% positive. And then lastly, we're not going to acknowledge problems and negativity unless we can offer a solution and positivity to counteract it. So those are our three steps to making our garden a little prettier, uh, to letting our flowers bloom and our fruits be reaped. Uh, and we're going to get rid of the negativity in our life, and we are going to live a life that is 51% or more positive. So make sure that you make a post tonight with the hashtag 51PERCENT. Hashtag 51%. Tell the world that you are tired of being negative and let them know that only 49% max of your life is going to be that way. Uh, so make that post of 51% and I hope that you enjoy the rest of your wonderful week ahead. We're going to be back next week. Um, next week is the show before my birthday. So I'm probably just going to talk about my birthday uh, and maybe share with you some of my birthday memories that I've had. Um, I know normally I just talk about fun little things at the last show, um, of, of the month, um, but I kind of want to talk about my birthday. So we'll figure out something to talk about having to do with birthdays next week. 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on my Facebook page, every single week. It's the Jason Elliott Show, where you ask, I talk, and we all grow on the Jason Elliott Show. And don't forget, while you're making your life a little more positive, what are we going to do? We're going to take it from dreams to goals and goals to realities because dreams are for those who are sleeping. If you're alive and awake and watching the Jason Elliott show, then that means that you can get up and you can make those dreams goals. Why? Because goals are attainable in life. There's something that we can work towards. And when we reach those goals, those goals become our reality. Your reality is yours and yours alone. So don't let anybody else tell you you can't have it. Don't let anybody else stop you from reaching your reality. And when you get your reality that you want, enjoy it. Flaunt it. Let everybody know that it's yours and you made it that way. Because you took it from dreams to goals and goals to realities. That's how we're going to do it. And I hope to see you next Thursday and every Thursday right here at 7 p.m. on the Jason Elliott Show. Have a great week, everybody. I'll see you next week. Mwah! Check that out. I stopped with the music again. Oh, yeah.